Hi guys, welcome to another video, welcome to another podcast. If this is your first time on this podcast or on this channel, please don't hesitate to subscribe. The button is right down below or on the follow sign of Spotify. And you can click it so that you can be notified every time I post, every time I have something new to share with you guys, and every time we're going to discuss something on this podcast. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of a chill talk and discussion on the topic of... Hi Hannah, I'm Danielle from the US and today can we make cuento about getting started and your process on following through an idea. It's easy to get excited about an idea in the beginning, but it gets gradually harder to complete it. So yeah, thanks. Thank you so much to Danielle for that short and sweet question. I'm really excited to be talking about getting started and my process of following through because this topic has been one that I've been working on in many spheres of my life. So it is an absolute perfect question. I don't know if you guys know, but on my Instagram, Hannah Pangalina, and I started a hashtag, which is hashtag just 10. And the story behind that is I really wanted to kickstart my fitness journey, but I was really struggling to be consistent. And so my really good friend, Ate Nicole, who is an athlete, who is a mom, who is an all-around baddie, honestly. She is just so strong, independent, good at what she does, excellent, and I don't know how she juggles everything. But I spoke to her because she is primarily really good at being consistently great at what she does. So I asked her, I said, Ate Nicole, how do I get started? And how do I remain consistent in working out? She said, you know, Hannah, just aim to do 10 minutes a day of what you want to do. That way, your goal is not intimidating. It is not super duper big. It is very much doable. And it will build a habit in your life. And before you know it, it will be something that you will automatically do, even if you don't want to do it. So the whole idea of it is you will start doing just 10, but once you get into the groove of things, you're going to easily jump into doing 20 minutes of that thing, 30 minutes, an hour, two hours, three hours. It's basically that idea of jumping in and then allowing yourself to do more if you want to or stop if you've already completed the 10 minutes so that your goal is checked off and there is no pressure. And what I love about that hashtag is it can apply to every sphere of your life. It could be 10 minutes of fitness. It could be 10 sentences of my new essay. It could be 10 words of a new song. You know, um, it is so easy to get it done. It is not intimidating, but it will build a habit in your life that is easy to follow. And little by little, you know, as you check off that 10 minutes daily, you will find yourself feeling good about yourself. You know, like, wow, I did it. I did it. And I can do more. You feel like you could do more. So that's a topic that um, I've been talking about on my IG stories, but I never got into it. And I really want to get into it today. So we're going to be talking about how to get started and how to follow through. Because I've gotten started on my fitness journey, but following through is another um, story. And... Yeah, we'll talk about it today. So why exactly do we struggle to get started, right? Well, personally, I am a planner. I love being organized. I love strategizing. And I love knowing what to do before I get it done. And that's a good thing, you know, when it comes to tests, being prepared for exams. Great. Being prepared for um, big projects before a meeting. Great. Fine. Prepare. But there comes a time when... Too much preparation is actually going to hinder you from progressing instead of better your progress. My dad has a saying that he uses, especially on me, (laughs) and he says, Hannah, ready, fire, and then aim. Because I'm the type of person who will ready myself, and then I will aim, and then never fire. (laughs) I'm going to throw away the arrow and be like, ah, you know what? Never mind. Maybe that was just meant to be an idea. And there have been so many projects that I've wanted to embark on that have just been chucked off in my notebooks because um, I aimed way too much and I planned way too much. And then the execution part just never happened. The execution part was way too big, was way too intimidating. And I just got so scared to even, you know, take a first step. So I'm 
gonna encourage you right now if you are somebody like me who loves to plan who loves to strategize let's be sensitive to um, our minds and our brains and let's recognize whether or not we are putting too much effort into the planning phase because then it will allow us to um, get started much earlier and to get started in general because we might even not get started in the first place if we plan way too much on that same topic of you know, the bigness of things and kind of being intimidated by um, a dream or a goal. I have a new song that just came out. It's called All The Way and I wrote it with Rico Blanco. And something that he told me was that I should not be intimidated by making a perfect song, by making a perfect album, by making a perfect EP to be able to put out music. Because I am a perfectionist and I'm you know, I'd I'd want to do everything with excellence. And because I want to do everything with excellence, there have been so many things that I have put in the back burner because I feel like it's not enough to show. Also, when it comes to having an audience or having people watching you, it's actually encouraging on their part to be able to see your progress. So Rika told me to let people go on the journey with me, to let people see where I have started and where I'm going to end up one day. And that means putting out content that means starting at a place where i'm not fully prepared to start but doing it for the sake of progress ed sheeran said one time that when you are writing music it's kind of like turning on a faucet that hasn't been turned on in a while you know the dirty water has to come out first it you know black water comes out of that faucet but sooner or later as you continue to keep that tap open water really clear water is sooner or later going to flow out of that tap and when it comes to starting when it comes to embarking on things when it comes to you know just big dreams we are going to make mistakes the first few times we are going to struggle the first few times we are going to be treading super duper lightly you know walking on eggshells as we start but sooner or later as we get the hang of it we are going to get you know, pretty good at what we're doing. We're going to, you know, get into the groove of things. We're going to get that flow. But you have to let out that dirty water first before you're able to consider yourself um, experienced in whatever field that is. So getting started earlier is so much better than getting started later because getting started later you're still going to have to put out that dirty water from the faucet so might as well do it now you know do it now i'm telling myself do it now while you don't have a lot of expectations on your life you know people are not telling you to get married yet or to find a stable job or to build a house or you know to retire there's no pressure for me at this time in my life get started make a mess Make so many mistakes while you still can, while it's still permissible, while you're still young and reckless and people can say, ah, she's just this age, she's figuring herself out, you know, take advantage of this moment. Um, So yeah, anyway, I really was encouraged by that for those people who struggle to get started because number one, it's either you are planning too much or number two, you are intimidated by the bigness of the dream that you are going to embark on i tell you it is a rite of passing to struggle it is a rite of passing to um get over that you know starting line to get over the nerves before starting a race it is a rite of passing so might as well do it earlier while it's still permissible for you to rather than to do it later because you're just prolonging (laughs) you're prolonging what you are bound to go through anyway which is the rough start. (laughs) So going back to my dad's statement, ready, fire, and then aim. There is still a preparation stage. There is still a part where you have to be ready. And so maybe it's not as extensive as the planning that I do and the strategizing that I do, but you should have a gauge of what you are doing and why you are doing something. So those are the two things that we are going to be dealing with right now. What are you seeing? What is that dream? Describe it vividly. I don't know about you, but I'm personally an outcome-based person. It's easy for me to imagine a project or a dream or a vision in my head when I describe the outcome, the end goal, the finish line. So whatever that is for you, before you get started, you must know what you are working towards first. What is that goal? Is it that 
dream house? Is it that family? Is it that degree? Is it that job? Is it that career? You want to start something, right? So how do you know if you've finished what you started? Write that down. Ask yourself, what is the outcome? Number two, which is more important than the what, is the why. And I've spoken about this on a lot of my videos, but the purpose behind what you do is what's going to sustain you. If you don't have a purpose, if you don't have um, something beyond the checklists, if you don't have something beyond the big vision, then yes, you are going to be discouraged and you are probably not going to fulfill what you want to fulfill. You know, it's like that analogy of the seed and the tree. You know, the, the what is an apple tree that has fruits. That is the end goal. That is the outcome. But in order to start, you must plant the seed first. And when you plant the seed for a good few weeks, for a good month or so, you are not going to see any sprout coming out of the ground. The seed is going to be below the ground and it's going to be nothing close to the vision that you have of that apple tree with a lot of fruits. So you go out your window and you see the ground and it's already two months of waiting, it's two months of watering, it's two months of giving it sunlight and nothing has happened. You're going to be so discouraged and you're going to probably throw away that dream of having an apple tree. But because we have common sense, because we know what science is like and we know what it means to grow a tree, we know that even if there is nothing sprouting at the top of the soil, there is something going on inside the seed. There is progress, you know, and you must continue to water it. You must continue to provide sunlight for it. Some people even talk to their plants. You must continue to do those things because you are trusting that there is progress being made even if you don't see it. And it's the same thing with our lives. It's the same thing with our dreams, you know. We have to trust that even if it does not look exactly like the outcome that we wanted to look at this current moment, there is still progress being made and we will only be able to gauge that if we have a purpose. And so what is the purpose of building an apple tree is to be able to enjoy apples. It's um, the ability to have a beautiful tree in your garden, you know, and to walk by and to sit under the shade. Those feelings, those purposes, those underlying pushes of motivation is what's going to push you. What is your why? Because your why behind the what is what's more important and is what's going to help you follow through. Okay, so we've got the what. We've got the why. Now, how do we do it, right? That question is very hard to lay out, mainly because we will all have different dreams and thoughts of what we want to start. Okay, I want to start um, content creating. I want to start filmmaking and I want to start my career. That's same. That's what I want to start. Why do I want to start it? It's because... I will feel empty inside if I don't pursue something that I know God has ordained me, called me, provided for me to do. I will just... Ugh, I will not be able to function. I will not be able to live my life happily and merrily if I'm not doing what God calls me to do. And I believe God has called me to communicate through film, through the arts, through um, creativity. I believe that's what he wants me to do. So that's my why. My why is beyond material things. My why is deep within my heart. So how do we start, right? How? So I can't tell you exactly how to pass the bar exam. <laughs> I can't tell you how to study for um, being a vet or building a house if you are an architect. Those are your spheres of influence. Those are your expertise but i could probably tell you how to start um planning a youtube video i could probably tell you how to start doing a podcast but the step-by-step -step, you know the, the specific details of the step-by-step -step, that is that is different for everyone but i think what remains the same is step one and step one i believe is um overcoming the fear Stepping outside of your comfort zone, I think that is step one. 
we all have a fear of beginning something because of a who god <laughs> for me it's a fear of not being able to live up to the expectations of other people and that is something i have come to terms with that's why i can tell it to you and that's why i can embark on big projects even if that fear is still there you know bravery is not the absence of fear but it is doing despite the fear being there and i think we have to first come to terms with the things in our life that we are scared of and then we tell ourselves that fear again and again until we get desensitized to it until we suddenly aren't afraid of it anymore so if my fear is of people's harsh expectations of who of what i should do of who i should be then i tell myself um yeah people might not like you people might not like you han um people might not be impressed by you people might not like what you put out but it doesn't matter and it shouldn't because you are doing this not for them it's for god and your father in heaven is going to be proud of you if you are doing what he has called you to do so if you are doing what he has called you to do and other people don't agree that's their loss because whatever god anoints whatever god blesses anybody who partakes in that blessing is going to be touched from heaven that's my fear but that's my rebuttal that is my but that is my reason to start despite my fear being a reason to not start so what is that thing that is hindering you from starting what is that fear that is probably holding you back admit it come to terms with it and know how to battle it when it comes and bites your butt while you are progressing forward because it's gonna come it is going to come but that's really the first step i believe it is coming to terms with the worst case scenario and being okay with it other practical ways is accountability which is very important to me so if you have a dream if you have a goal if you have a purpose that you want to do and you probably want to give yourself a deadline say i want to be able to finish my masters by 25 okay tell someone about it and not just tell someone about it but let them know i am making you my accountability partner what is accountability partner that means this is somebody that's going to annoy you <laughs> be like oh so how's your project now nah. when you have an accountability partner you are putting your dream into the light you are making it known to somebody outside of you and therefore if you back out if you say never mind there is going to be somebody that is going to get you back on track there is going to be somebody that is going to annoy the heck out of you until you start walking forward and so choose an accountability partner who is that person that is going to push you to pursue this dream who is that person that knows you so well that is going to be able to talk you out of those doubtful thoughts that is going to talk you out of that fear you know tell somebody about it i'm embarking on this really big project at the moment and i recruited my cousin Timo to work with me on this because he is going to be um or he has been <laughs> he has been keeping me accountable to my word when i say i'm going to do something he is going to make sure i get it done and we need people like that in our lives especially for somebody as scatterbrained as me i can easily drop a project and move on to the next one because i don't feel passionate enough if we have accountability partners they are there to remind you why you started they are there to get you up your, on your feet when you are on the ground having a mental breakdown about that project or that dream we need these people in our lives and so if you put your dream out into the world some people call it manifesting i call it making it known to not just my friend but to god what i want i'm telling you it will happen another thing that i'm going to say is make baby deadlines and this is very um, helpful for me because it does not intimidate me when i have baby deadlines so instead of saying by you know 25 i'm going to be finished with my masters instead i'm going to say okay by 20 
one, I'm going to be finished with my degree by 22. I'm going to start earning for, you know, my master degree by 23. You know, having baby deadlines is going to make it easier on your brain and on your mind um, to take those little steps. And you will, you know, have a rush of completion when you reach those baby deadlines. So you don't have to wait for so long until you feel like you've completed something. Your tasks are going to be smaller and your little victories are going to be there. But when accumulated, oh my gosh, the feeling of crossing out all of those things from your checklist is going to be absolutely amazing so yeah don't put so much pressure on yourself to try to do so many things at once going back to just 10 you know just say 10 minutes a day and when you feel like you can fine let's do 20 minutes a day and then when you can make do 30 minutes a day go slow on yourself be easy on yourself um progress is progress right that's what i always say just keep moving forward. I love that movie, Meet the Robinsons. It's a really cool movie. So yeah, keep moving forward, no matter how small the steps are. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry for interrupting, but I just want to take this time to thank the sponsor of today's video. Thank you so much to Skillshare. I love you guys so freaking much. You are so supportive of my channel, but today I want to share with you guys what Skillshare is. If you don't know what it is already, it is an online learning community where millions of us come together to learn and unleash our creativity with learning about design, UX, production, film, video, photography, freelance work, anything under the sun, honestly, you will find it on Skillshare. And I think now is the perfect time to really hone our skills and learn from the best of the best. What I love about Skillshare is that, yes, you do have online classes, but you also have class projects that you can work on with a community so that you could really put everything that you've learned into practice. Maddie Brown's class on low budget filmmaking is my next one on the list to check out because I really want to start doing more film projects, but I really don't want to break the bank. So I'm really excited to do that and hopefully you guys will see the effects of that class on my YouTube channel in the next few months. Skillshare is for absolutely everybody under the sun that just wants to try something new, that wants to develop their craft, and that wants to, you know, try something different maybe or learn from the people that have come before us. For less than $10 a month, you can access thousands of Skillshare's classes and they're less than, majority of them are less than 60 minutes, so it can fit anybody's schedule and I promise if you want to learn something and you're passionate about something, you will find the time to do it. Oh, and did I mention that the first 1,000 people to click the link in my bio are going to get a free Skillshare membership trial? Oh, I didn't mention that? Well, I just did. So you might want to click the link in my description box. So that is the end of this sponsored segment. Thank you so much to Skillshare again for sponsoring this video. I love you guys so freaking much. And I'm excited for what next year is going to look like for all of us lifelong learners over here. Okay. I'm gonna let you guys get back to the podcast, but I love you all. Okay, bye. For somebody like me who likes planning, who likes being prepared and strategizing, um, there are times when I can be more committed to the plan than the actual purpose of that plan. I can be more committed to the schedule that I have instead of why I even made the schedule in the first place. So we have to be open to adjusting and to remember what is really important. You know, when I was in high school and I was studying IB, I had a lot of things on my plate, you know, and I had A, B, C, D, E, F, G homeworks to do. And when I'd write it down on my planner and Solana would come into my room and ask me to play, I could easily say no because it's on my schedule. I have to get it done. But what's more important? Your schedule getting a good grade for that specific assignment or enjoying a moment of spending time with your sister on her birthday you know something like that what is more important be able to adjust because life is not going to happen the way that you plan it all the time especially when the time frame is longer you can think that you have a good gauge of you know how long it will take for you to get this done or how long it will take for you to get that done or for somebody to get back to you but things are not going to fall into place all the time and when that happens because it will we have to be prepared to step back to put our schedules on hold 
and to realign, to adjust based on our priorities. We can't be annoyed, we can't be frustrated with life happening to us sometimes. It's part of the process and being able to adjust and embrace change is going to help you progress so much more in the future. Because change is inevitable. And you can either adjust, you can either adapt or die. <laughs> it's a natural selection, friends. <laughs> Isaiah 55 verse 6 says, Behold, I am doing a new thing. God is always doing new things in our lives. He is known to be the resurrector, the renewer of all things, the revitalizer, the one who revives those things that are dying off, that have low battery. He's the one that's going to charge us. That is the role of God. And there are going to be moments when you feel like you have no more to give. There are going to be moments when you feel exhausted and tired and strained because you feel like you keep on putting in the work, but you have no return. His mercies are new every single morning. Maybe you didn't do it last year. Maybe you didn't do it yesterday. Maybe you slacked off an hour ago. But God is always prepared to renew you, to forget the things that you have done before, and to wipe you clean. And all we have to do is just say, Lord, Lord, I'm sorry. I messed up. Can we try again? In, in, our, in our household, we say, Mom, can we restart? You know, when we get into an argument or a disagreement, it takes, you know, a lot of humility to be able to say that. But, Lord, can we restart? I'm sorry. And He will renew you. He will give you a second wind, a push of His strength. I'm so excited for whatever it is that God has placed in your heart to start. And I pray that this podcast is going to encourage you to do so. But can I just end with this quote from Leonardo da Vinci, painter of the Mona Lisa, we all know him, the Renaissance man, Jack of all trades. When the great geniuses are working less, they accomplish more. I love that. Leonardo da Vinci is known for a lot of his great works. But he is also known as the one that did not finish a lot of things. Because he started on way too many things. <laughs> so whenever you are starting something, there is a balance between starting something and knowing whether or not it is worth it to continue. And starting something. And not starting a new thing before that thing is completed. I start way too... I start way too many things. Way too many projects. Way too many initiatives. And a lot of the times I don't follow through because I have way too many things on my hands. On my plate. But when we have focused energy on something... We are actually going to accomplish more in the long run. Sometimes we have to stick through it. We have to just hold our breath and get it done. And there are times when you have to say, you know what? Maybe this idea was only meant to go this far. And I learned a lot in the process. So that's okay. Don't be so hard on yourself. You know, you can always start a project and finish it the next year. You can always start a project, learn what you were meant to learn, and then get started in something new. We all are in a unique place in our lives. And we just have to be able to gauge that, you know. I personally think I start way too many things. 
So I'm in the process of offloading certain things that I can't commit to anymore so that I can put more of my energy into something that really has a deep purpose in my life. It really has priority and priority in my life is always what God wants me to do because again, as I say so many times on this channel or on this podcast, what God calls, he sustains. And so if I'm doing something for him, he will provide all the means for me to do it. So let's not get started for the sake of finishing. Let's not get started because we feel like we need to prove ourselves. Let's get started because you won't be able to breathe without it. <laughs> Let's get started because future generations depend on us to start. Let's get started because we were called to start. To finish, rather, what God has started in our life. So yeah, that is the end of this video of this podcast. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you learned something from it. I would love it if you guys send me your, you know, projects that you want to start, your dreams, your goals on Twitter or on Instagram. Let me know how you were encouraged to take the first steps of whatever it is you are passionate about. Um, use the hashtag just10 on my Instagram. You can tag me on your stories. And if you want to send in a Quanta request, please send me one at quantuswithhanna at gmail.com so that we can talk about a topic that you are particularly interested in. So yes, that is the end of this video. I hope that you enjoyed this video and this podcast. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye!